We have seen that global average temperatures have been rising since the instrumental record began. However, perhaps the temperature rise is simply an anomaly, part of some long-term natural variability. 170 odd years is a relatively short period, all things considered. Is this temperature rise unusual? Well, we can address this issue. We can extend the temperature record. This figure shows the temperature record of the last 2,000 years. We can see, and indeed the IPCC sixth assessment report states, that the observed warming since 1850 is unprecedented in more than 2,000 years. You might have heard of the medieval warm period that lasted between circa 950 to circa 1250 current era. Evidence for this comes from historical documents, botany and extant temperature measurements. However, as you can see from this figure, there is little to no evidence that it can be seen in the global temperature record. We now know that the warm period was isolated to the North Atlantic region and was not global. While the North Atlantic was unusually warm, other regions, such as the tropical Pacific, were colder than normal. The average global temperatures have no signal of this localised warming. This shows the danger of relying on data from a limited region and extrapolating that data to infer a global phenomenon. You might be wondering how these temperature records are constructed. After all, there were no temperature records using direct measurements of temperature with thermometers earlier than the central England temperature record that began in 1659 and which itself was certainly not global. In science, it is sometimes necessary to study a variable which cannot be measured directly. This can be done by proxy methods, in which a variable which correlates with the variable of interest is measured, and then used to infer the value of the variable of interest. Proxy methods are of particular use in the study of past climate, beyond times when direct measurements of temperature are available. Most proxy records have to be calibrated against independent temperature measurements or against a more directly calibrated proxy during their period of overlap to estimate the relationship between temperature and the proxy. The longer history of the proxy is then used to reconstruct temperature from earlier periods. Perhaps the most well-known proxy method in temperature reconstructions is dendroclimatology, in which the width of tree rings is used to determine past climate. Tree rings are wider when conditions favour growth and narrower when times are difficult. Using tree rings, scientists have estimated many local climates for hundreds to thousands of years previous. By combining multiple tree ring studies, scientists have estimated past regional and global climates. One of the particular advantages of tree ring studies is the ease with which tree rings can be dated. Another proxy comes from studying coral reefs. Coral grows in warm shallow waters and like their land-based counterparts, corals add seasonal layers which appear as bands in their hard calcium carbonate shells. The bands in the coral's shell can change in thickness with changes in temperature, water clarity or nutrient availability. So while each band can record the seasonal climate, the interpretation of the record depends on how the three factors are related. Cool water rising from the ocean floor brings extra nutrients in many areas, so the shells are often thicker when the water is cool. In other areas, the cold may slow growth. Scientists have to couple their observations of patterns in the seasonal bands to other measurements, including modern observations of cold growth, to determine what the bands say about climate change. The last proxy method I want to discuss is the study of ice cores. Ice cores are one of the best available climate proxies providing a fairly high resolution estimate of climate changes into the deep past. An ice core is a core sample that is typically removed from an ice sheet or a high mountain glacier. Since the ice forms from the incremental build-up of annual layers of snow, 
lower layers are older than upper, and an ice core contains ice formed over a range of years. Such ice cores can reach depths of over 2 miles, that is 3.2 kilometres, and contain ice up to 800,000 years old. Since scientists cannot directly measure temperatures from ice cores, they have to rely on measuring the oxygen isotope, oxygen-18, in water, which is correlated with temperature, if somewhat imperfectly. The figure here shows the ice core temperature record from cores drilled at Vostok Station, a Soviet research station in Antarctica founded during the International Geophysical Year. This core enables the temperature to be reconstructed for the past 420,000 years. This record reveals past ice ages and interglacial periods. The last interglacial period ended about 120,000 years ago. Thereafter, we had an ice age that itself ended about 11,500 years ago. Since then, Earth has been in an interglacial period called the Holocene. The glacial interglacial cycles revealed in the ice core temperature record are caused by Milankovitch cycles, that is the variations in eccentricity, axial tilt and precession that result in cyclical variations in the solar radiation reaching the Earth system. This figure shows that current temperatures have certainly not been witnessed in the last 100,000 years. However, what is stark about the long-term temperature record is how unusual the recent rise in temperature is. Although temperature rises of 10 degrees Celsius characterise the transition from glacial to interglacial periods, the rate of the temperature increase seen recently is far more rapid than has been seen in the last 800,000 years. Thanks for listening.